All righty, that was Louisiana Senator John Kennedy earlier today saying that he supports President Trump declaring a national emergency in wake of the watered-down border security bill. But critics are already chomping at the bit to challenge any action he takes. Ellison Barber is live at the White House tonight with the late-breaking developments. Ellison. Hi, Tammy. A senior administration official tells Fox News that President Trump is going to announce $8 billion for that border wall, his long-promised border wall, and that he will use executive actions in order to move around and free up that money from various federal agencies. The senior administration official also says that the president will declare a national emergency. When it comes to that funding bill, they say they're not exactly sure when they will receive a physical copy of it here at the White House. But at this point, I'm being told that they expect President Trump to sign it tomorrow morning. There are, of course, still more details that we will get throughout the night and, of course, more tomorrow morning. White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders had told reporters earlier today that more details would be coming. And in a statement, uh, she said this, quote, President Trump will sign the government funding bill, as he has stated before. He will also take other executive action, including a national emergency to ensure we stop the national security and humanitarian crisis at the border. The president is once again delivering on his promise to build the wall, protect the border and secure our great nation. But the Department of Justice reportedly warned the White House that a national emergency declaration will almost certainly be blocked by the courts. According to a new report by ABC News, DOJ is telling the White House it's nearly certain that the courts step in and block this, quote, preventing the immediate implementation of the president's plan to circumvent Congress and build the wall using his executive powers, at least temporarily. President Trump has repeatedly said if he takes the national emergency route, he expects legal action to follow this afternoon. The White House said they're ready for it. But Press Secretary Sarah Sanders also said that there should not be any of that sort of action because, in her words, the president is doing his job and Congress should do theirs. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy says he spoke with President Trump this evening. According to Leader McCarthy, the president feels good about the funding bill, though one source tells Fox News earlier in the day the president was very conflicted about certain sections of the legislation. Tammy? Uh, Allison, thank you very much. Appreciate it. This could all stop tomorrow if Congress did what it should do tonight. All asylum applications should be filed outside of America. Secondly, the law must be changed to allow for immediate border turnbacks. Another third, one illegal border crossing and you're out. You're back home and that means back to zero tolerance. And finally, prosecute more adults for child endangerment. All righty. Well, that was Laura here on The Angle last night, as she mentioned, with her advice to fix the border security bill. Joining me now, Tom Homan, former acting director of ICE and now a Fox News contributor, and Hector Garza, a Border Patrol agent and vice president of the National Border Patrol Council. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me on this very important night. Uh, let me ask you, uh, Mr. Garza, clearly this is a, an argument about whether or not there's an emergency. We know in 2017, over 70,000 Americans died of overdoses, primarily due to opioids, fentanyl and heroin. That is uh, more than the 58,000 people who died in all of the years of the Vietnam War combined. One year, 70,000 Americans dead with, from drugs that come primarily 80 to 90 percent from the southern border. Is that not an emergency, sir? Clearly, it's a humanitarian crisis and it's an emergency. What we see right now is between ports of entry, we see a lot of dangerous drugs. And what you have to consider is that between ports of entry, that those are considered unsecured location, unlike ports of entry. Ports of entry are secure locations with technology and manpower. Between ports of entry, we don't have that technology. We don't have that manpower. And yes, it is a crisis. And, and President Trump should declare an emergency. Well, and see, you're, you see this every day. The, the men and women you represent see this every day. Uh, Mr. Homan, uh, you know, your experience, too, I think is invaluable here uh, in that there's arguments from the Democrats who say, well, most of this comes in through the, the secured point of port, of port of entries. What does that no. tell you about? But even if it was true. What no, does that look, tell you that what happens with the unsecured areas if all of these drugs, if they, as they argue, are coming in from the ports of entry? All the more reason why we would need the wall, correct? Look, the Democrats are, are twisting the story. The, what the fact is, more drugs are seized at the port of entry because every car is stopped. Every person is talked to. 
So, of course, they're going to find more drugs because they've got better security. That doesn't mean drugs in, uh, aren't coming across between the ports of entry because there's, there's places where cars can drive through to bob wire fencing. They can be smuggled on backpack. So, of course, more drugs arrest at the port of entry. That's why we need security between the ports of entry so we can arrest more of that. I mean, they just, you, you, they just turn that story around against American people. Again, it's that false narrative they send that drugs don't come across that border. you got a border patrol agent sitting there with you. When I was a border patrol agent, well, I had 221 kilos in the truck to come across a, a barbed wire fence. Yeah, and it see, happens. There's, there's, Mr. Garza, there's this attitude also of like what we find or what we interdict is all that's coming over. The problem is what we don't know. And what we know that that border walls that do exist, what they've stopped over 90 percent of the illegal activity. Can we expect that with what we're going to be building now with whether it's the Rio Grande or wherever the president needs to start? So first of all, this border bill is not good for border security. It's actually very, very bad. If you look at the 50 mile, 55 miles of border wall that were approved in this border bill. Yeah. Uh, the language in the restricts of where we can build that, that border wall. As a matter of fact, in the Rio Grande Valley, those are areas that are very, very busy where drugs are coming across and very dangerous criminals. Now, think about this, Tammy. We, had, uh, we have about four agents that encounter about 300 illegal aliens out there. That part of the border is not secure anymore because those four agents now have to go in and process those illegal right, aliens. Great point. And, and, of course, now what we're dealing with here is this framework of the national emergency uh, and at least allowing us to then approach this in a much more aggressive way. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Coming up. Breaking details, raising new questions about the alleged MAGA attack on Empire actor Jesse Smollett. A live report on a story that is getting crazier by the minute. Plus, new details about a group of rogue FBI leaders, an extraordinary development, trying to take down President Trump. House Intelligence Committee ranking member Devin Nunez joins me live with can't miss reaction. <laughs> 